I want to welcome you to this session. I am Israel Olasukomi of um, Educational Technology Unit, the Department of Science and Technology Education, University of Ibadan, where I have my colleagues, Professor Ayotola Aremu, Dr. Adetumbi Akiyemi, and I have my colleagues in the studio, Shino Oyedele, Tayo Akimoju, they are with me in the studio. Today, we're considering a topic, systems, instructional system, and design. I'm sure you're going to enjoy every bit of this lesson. Before we move forward, I need you to take note of some things that we should be able to do at the end of this lesson. Number one, you should be able to describe what a system is and how the term applies to education. Number two, you need to be able to identify three major orientations of an instructional system. And finally, you should be able to critically assess the various aspects of instructional system. Let's start it this way. What is a system? Think about it. A system. We could define a system as a collection of elements, parts, or components which work together cooperatively with the purpose of achieving some predetermined goals or objectives. That is it. A system is a collection of elements, collection of parts, collection of components which work together cooperatively with the purpose, with the aim of achieving some predetermined goals or objectives. Let's give examples of systems. Think about the solar system. That's a natural system. There are physical, that's non-living things, and there are biological things, living systems within that system. We also have the political system. If you think about it a little, you also think about economic system. There is social system, we have the weapon system, and you can continue to count. Those are examples of systems. Now, our interest is in the educational system. Systems are built around elements, content, parts or components, input resources of the system. We refer to them as that. Then we need to remember that in a system, the elements, the components, the parts work together cooperatively. The system must have a process. We've just talked about the inputs. We also should have the process. Then the next thing is the product. Achieving some predetermined goals, the system must have a purpose, must have a product. In other words, there are three parts of a system. Number one, the input resources. All that you put into that system, then you talk about the, the process. That's the interrelationship, the working together, that's the process. And then the product, and that's the output. Let's go a little further. We have what we call suprasystem. Likewise, we have what we call a subsystem. They all exist in an environment. Subsystem is a subset of a system. Suprasystem, the bigger one that has those if you have more than one system, two systems, three systems, they work together and they still work as a system. You take, for example, the human body. It's a system, but it has so many systems. We have the digestive system. We have the blood circulatory system. The central nervous system. All these work together. They are called subsystem, while the whole body is a supra system. 
let's come back to education and look at different types of systems we have there. Number one, we have the formal education system. The formal education system is the organized school system, the primary, the secondary, and the tertiary education systems. Those are systems we find in formal education system. Number two, we have the non-formal education system. This one is referred to as the training system as opposed to the formal system of education. It's a training system where you have the apprentice or the apprentices and there is somebody, the master, who puts the apprentices through. He guides them, he trains them to acquire skills. Number three, the informal education system. It is a system of education, but it is informal. The informal system is unorganized and unsympathetic. It is characterized by incidental learning because there are no organized curricula or programs and planned lectures, planned lectures, lessons as such. We have looked at the mini of a system. We've considered the examples of a system. We've looked at our own area of interest that's educational system. We looked at the three major parts of a system. That's the input, the process, and the product. We've also mentioned that we have the suprasystem subsystem. And we've tried to look at the educational system as having number one, formal education system, two, non-formal education system, the informal education system number three. Now let's go for a break. <laughs>